Okay, Divya, so here's the question. Um, it says, if for a reaction delta U is zero, what can you say about delta S? And you're confused as to how to get to this conclusion. Okay, so this requires assumptions, yeah, of some, to, some kinds to be made. And I'll explain them as we go along. So the first thing that you can see is that they're talking about some kind of a reaction that occurs, which means that it must be spontaneous, yeah? And if it is spontaneous, then you know that delta G, which is equal to delta H minus T delta S, yeah? This must be less than zero, okay? Now, you're also given that delta U is equal to zero. Now, we've called delta U in our classes, we've used the term delta E, okay? So I'm going to use delta E, and if delta E is zero, that means delta it that means n c v delta t, okay, equals zero. Now, obviously, this means that delta t itself must be zero, okay. Now, if this reaction is taking place in a lab, remember that you it's taking place under constant atmospheric pressure, which means pressure is constant, and therefore delta h itself must be, which is equal to n c p delta t, must be zero, because delta t itself is zero. Now, if this is the case, and you want delta g to be less than zero, then you know that t cannot be a negative number. So if, so this is zero. So if minus t delta s has to be less than zero, and t cannot be negative, then it means that delta s must be greater than zero. I hope this answers your question. Let me know if you still have problems.